Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. In today's video, I want to talk about chameleons. And you're a chameleon if you're a person that has the personality type of, say, an INTJ, yet the developer. <laughs> of say an INTP or INFJ. What this means is you have developed to act in a way that is counterintuitive to a personality with your values and interests. So what that can mean is, for example, you're an INTJ that pulls extra heavily on sensing. What that means is you will perhaps be more focused on the facts, the data and what you know. You've developed to learn that speculation and theories are unimportant or trivial unless you can find proof or evidence to back them up. You've perhaps trained yourself to know that while perfection and the standards and critical thinking is a valuable thing, you do have to consider the feelings of other people. So a chameleon is a person that feels they do not belong. Often the core characteristic feeling of a chameleon is I feel I do not belong. I feel I cannot be myself. I feel I cannot act or be the way I want to be. So what you do here is you create a difference between yourself and your socialized self. So you create a socialized self or a socialized self-expression that is different than who you are. And this builds often an alienation. The more you do this, the more alienated you feel. Perhaps you feel that because you do and pull on this social persona, you can fit in more easily. But even though you fit in more easily, you still feel more alienated. You still feel you are different. You still feel misunderstood. When other people validate your social persona, you feel misunderstood, you feel like a fraud, you feel that you are not being completely yourself, and you feel that other people don't get you. So a lot of the time, chameleons emerge when they are raised by parents who have a different personality type than their own, or perhaps when they're socialized into a culture that is different than their own. Imagine a culture that teaches you to express your feelings openly, and imagine you're a person that values privacy and a person that values being level-headed and calm and dealing with your emotions with a rational basis. So if you are this kind of person, you often feel you are forced to act the way you are. Chameleons act and respond to force or an experience of force or externalized motivation. A lot of the time when they talk about their values, they will say, I like this because other people want me to like it. I enjoy this because other people are interested in it. Imagine a person talking about the latest soccer game saying, yeah, I really like it because everyone else is really into it. And I know and I feel that I must be into it because other people are into it. There is something genuinely captivating about the energy and the will and interests and values of other people. When we are around people that are different from us and who have different values and passions and motivations than we do, we, to some extent, let ourselves be influenced by these values. We can learn to understand that this is important because it is important to other people. But we might not even understand this misassumption in ourselves. A chameleon who takes their chameleonism to an ex extreme will feel that they cannot tell the difference between their externalized source of motivation and their internalized source of motivation. While it begins as a game or as adaptation, it becomes reality. We l lose the ability to recognize intrinsic internal sources of motivation and values and interests that are at our heart because we are so focused and so stressed about values that are outside it, that are closer to other people around us. But there are ways as a chameleon to recognize and refine yourself. Through this, most people who struggle, struggle with chameleon syndrome are people that feel they must take time to themselves. These people often have a big need for alone time. While they get energized and energetic and interested around other people, they often feel at some point drained and exhausted by the mask they must put on. They feel it is difficult that people are getting to them, that things are getting annoying, that they get, start feeling upset or confused or uh, tense because of their surroundings and because of their environment. 
when you have to be or act in a way that is counterintuitive to yourself, you start first feeling excited and first energized, but then the first energy, the first reward, the first smile you get from other people, you know, fades. And the motivation is not enough anymore. A lot of the time when I fell into more people-pleasing behavior, you know, when I went further into being extroverted and outgoing like I did in politics, I hit the level where I felt, uh, I felt that I was, uh, and this is hard to explain, but I felt that I was putting out energy uh, and getting exhausted for it. I felt on the outside happy and cheery, but on the inside I felt tired and exhausted. And a lot of time I struggled with this. And at some point I had to run away. I had to pull away. I had to ignore, shut on my phone, ignore everything and just tune back into myself. At some point that energy you feel and you have around other people starts to feel fake. And more than that, it never feels enough when we pursue and chase extrinsic sources of motivation. You know, when you do things for other people, when you seek the approval of other people, the smiles, happiness, joy in other people's eyes, you also don't really feel the motivation as it is your own. And so you never feel satisfied. That uh, compulsive search we have to get validated by other people is exhausting because it starts to eat us up. We, it's like eating soup but not getting full, only getting more and more hungry. You need it more and more and more and more and eventually you realize it's not doing it for me. Like no matter how much I drink, I'm not going to get drunk. You know, no matter what's going to happen, it's not going to be enough. So you hit the point where you realize you don't want it anymore. And you have a lot of Instagram stars out there that hit this level where I've been putting out things every day, trying so hard to look good for other people, and it's not doing it for me anymore. I'm f I don't feel any joy from it. I don't like it anymore. And that's the shift. That's when a chameleon uh, starts to uh, shed their skin and become and step into themselves. So what happens here is something really fascinating. We realize that we have a persona and that our persona is different from ourselves. And we start thinking, how do I pursue and shake off my persona? So what we start doing is we start looking for people that are more like us. We start uh, uh, recognizing and tuning down our social self. You know, if you have a volume button for the social self and the volume button for the self, what you do is you start tuning down the volume of the social self. So what happened for me was I suddenly felt it was not as important to be socially on for other people anymore. Nowadays, when I'm around other people, I am much more quiet, much more laid back, much more relaxed. And nowadays people always tell me, Eric, you seem so relaxed. You seem so calm. You seem so chill. <laughs> you seem so comfortable. No matter what, nothing seems to get to you. Nobody seems to hit that point. You know, I was looking at, you know, you know, that really annoying character in Game of Thrones, you know, Bran Stark. Uh, at some point, you know, I'm infuriated by that character. You know, the character just sits in a wheelchair, stares at you, doesn't care, doesn't anything. And uh, at the same point, I see like, oh my God, what an inspiration he is. My God, what an inspiration. A person that doesn't feel he has to do anything. A person that feels I can just rest back, lay back and take it easy and other people will solve my problems. At some point, there is something almost liberating and, you know, being that kind of person and being allowing, allowing yourself to be that kind of person. And, uh, you know, when I started doing this, a lot of my friends, they were like, what happened to you, Eric? You're not yourself anymore. You're not as on anymore. You know, a lot of people and they still do this, you know, because I still find myself sometimes going into, you know, compulsive caregiving or caretaking, compulsively making other people's problems my own, you know. I sometimes still have this problem. I can't completely let go of my social persona. Uh, and so people, when I tune this down, people start feeling upset and they start going like, 
but you're usually always so helpful. Why are you not helping me anymore? Why are you not giving me anything? And they get actually visibly upset, you know, and annoyed because I'm not performing according to the social expectations they have developed about me and my identity. They believe my identity to the tribe is this social, compulsive, caregiving persona. They believe it is who I am meant to be, who I am. When in fact, I can contribute and do something positive and meaningful being just the way I am, being just true to myself. I don't have to play along with the social games. I don't have to put on the social mask to be valuable or useful to the tribe. And here's where people start hitting, you know, the stage four of personal growth, as I'm mapping it out, is about tribe identity, identity to the tribe, your persona, your mask. Uh, stage seven of personal growth is self-realization. And you notice there are a few steps in between there, and I will go on and talk more about this in other videos. But the interesting thing about stage four versus stage seven is at stage four, you are so focused on your role to other people. Who am I to my friends? How do my teachers see me? What is my role in class? You know, being the clown, being the smart person, you know, being the teacher's pet, you know, you're so addicted to your expectations and your personal role. It can be if you're at work or if you're in family, you have a very clear rehearsed behavior, you know, something you have to do, something that is, and you believe is you. But eventually as you go older, you recognize I don't like a lot of these things and you start shedding a lot of these things away. So gradually you start moving beyond this stage. This is not yourself. This version of ego is a fraud. This uh, version of self is incomplete. It is there for a valid reason and that reason is preservation and adaptation. A lot of the time we are taught that if we do not go along with our social expectations, we will get punished by the tribe. The tribe will come to get us, you know. And everyone has this fear. Every single person on earth has this fear to some extent. Some are just more controlled by it than others. And to some people, this is a lot more real than other people. In some cultures, you can't get past this. In some subgroups in society and some religious cults this is so important and you're not allowed to go beyond it so a lot of people will hold you down force you to stay there do not start looking at and pursuing your own interests do not start recognizing and listening to yourself do not because then you will abandon the tribe and then the tribe will fall apart and you know everybody will be alone and uh we have th this fear just that's very real and it's very present and it's everywhere around us. Luckily, the joy of self-realization is also there. And that means uh, if you're a chameleon, you're also going to realize there's a lot of joy and energy and a lot of freedom in shedding this image. And there is something waiting on the other side. You know, society is starting to progress beyond this. There are people out there, peers, people out there that are going to be more open-minded and tolerant, people that are going to see you for who you are. And perhaps even your old friends will as well. You know, while there is a temporary backlash from the tribe, while the tribe might temporarily be upset, uh, all you need to do is tune out for a little bit, take a break from it and come back and... Hopefully people will be forced to adjust, you know, if you if they recognize it's permanent, if they recognize they can't manipulate or control you anymore, they're going to be more forgiving and accepting as well. Eventually, I think uh, a lot of the time social expectations are games we play on ourselves. We think we have to be certain things, but we don't. We think uh, we have to play a certain role to our partners, family and friends, but it's not that important. And eventually... Your personality and yourself is a lot bigger than what you think. And that's uh, a realization you're going to make sometime when you're done with the MTI and you start recognizing that, oh, I'm more than the textbook ENFP description. I'm not uh, the INTJ mastermind everybody told me I was. You know, you start getting beyond it and you start recognizing there's something on the other side. And... Um, what you get towards is a more dynamic self-image, a more representative version of yourself, a more accurate, nuanced idea of what your true values and interests are in life. And that's the goal of uh, my channel, to help you find a way out of the stereotypes. If you enjoy that and if you like my videos, feel free to like, share and subscribe. And uh, 
thanks everyone for tuning in and of course thanks to all my patrons at patreon.com slash eric door you make everything here possible and you mean everything to me thanks for watching and see you all in the next video